have automatically a built-in game plan when you run the triple option because uh, uh, you know you you know how you're going to attack folks before you ever line up. You can simplify your offense by cutting it down to a few plays because you are an option offense. So you know after the ball is snapped, you're deciding the point of attack and you're deciding how you how you get after uh, moving the football uh, after the ball is snapped. So consequently. Uh, you, it's family oriented a whole lot because you don't have to stay up all night having staff meetings and you don't have to have those Sunday staff meetings. The fact is we don't have Sunday staff meetings and uh, uh, somewhere or another we uh, d discovered a long time ago that when we, when, I get, when we get our priorities right and we put first things first, which uh, you know, somewhere I read about uh, resting the seventh day and keeping it holy and, and, uh, I, and I've always said uh, to our coaches that if uh, God can create the world and all that's in it in six days, then surely we can get ready to play a football game in six days. And so, uh, so that's the reason it's family oriented. If we keep our priorities right, Lord first and family second, and then that old football come in there, then I think we probably do a whole lot better and, and uh, probably be rested better and get a lot of other things done better and, and maybe even communicate to kids better. And so uh, that's one reason we like triple option uh, option offense is because we've got our built-in game plan a whole lot uh, that will that will work 10 straight weeks and uh, uh, and then all we got to do is make sure that we get our point of attack right we go the right direction and uh, and I'm going to show you that in just a second I think uh, you know there's a lot of ways to skin a cat and there's uh, you know a whole lot of people that do things different ways offensively uh, I know throwing the football you decide after the ball is snapped uh, who you're throwing it to and where you're throwing it. And, and that's what option football does with the running game. It gives you a chance to decide where the point of attack is after the ball is snapped. And I think that's, uh, I think that's a great uh, ingredient to option football. Uh, it's funny how the things evolved. Used to, uh, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you had a guy that you knew was going to carry the ball and he knew where, which hole he was going to hit and all that was decided before the ball is snapped. Now everything in football has evolved to the point that it's decided after the ball is snapped. And so consequently, uh, it, it's important, I think, that, that you keep it uh, simple as far as offensively uh, is concerned. Now I'm going to walk over here to the Telestrator and show you a little bit about, uh, about what I'm talking about when I'm talking about numbers. Uh, if I could get that, uh, there it is. I think one of the most important things is to play uh, numbers football. In the option game, we're always concerned about the numbers. Uh, we want to, uh, if they've got six on one side and five on the other, then we want to always attack the five side. We're always working for a two-on-one fast break in the option game. And so here's a, here's a defensive problem. Uh, you know, everybody's playing gap responsibility, A gap, B gap, C gap. And then somebody's got to have the quarterback. That thing's not riding real good. And then here's somebody on the pitch. Well, over here you got the same thing. Somebody's got to be responsible. A gap, B gap, C gap. Somebody's got to take the quarterback. Somebody's got to take the pitch. And then somebody has to have the deep third. The deep third for coverage, deep third here for coverage, and deep third here for coverage. So you start counting those up. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven on that side, seven on that side, that's 14 people. And uh, as you very well know that you don't have 14 people uh, to play defense, you got 11. I might count it wrong. I think it's only 13. But anyway, uh, those high numbers give me a hard time. But I think you understand what I'm saying is, is that somewhere or another, they've got to avoid an area in order to get seven people, six people to one side in order to stop the option because you're always working on two-on-one -on fast break. And so the first thing we want to do when we're attacking folks, we want, we want to come right down the middle of the field right there, and we want to decide how many people's defending on that side and how many people defending on this side. And you know, in, the, in, in defenses nowadays, everybody's trying to uh, uh, make a guy a, a, a two-place player. He's trying to play deep third and, and maybe take, uh, try to take away the pitch, or he's trying to play uh, the dive and also help you on the quarterback. And so folks are trying to do a lot of things to try to try to make a, a player, a two position player or a two spot player and it really makes it tough for the option game, especially if you're attacking the option uh, the way you need to. 
so basically what, what, what we're excited about with the option game is, is that number one, we've got numbers advantage every time the ball is snapped. As long as our quarterback is trained to get us headed in the right direction, we're either going to the right side or we're going to the left side. And we've given him uh, uh, some keys about which way do you attack uh, as far as the point of attack is concerned. The second thing uh, that we want to do, we want to attack the void areas. If there's a, if there's a void in the defense, uh, in other words, that guy's trying to be a fish and a foul. In other words, he's trying to be part of the dive responsibility, and he's trying to be the, part of the responsibility of taking the, uh, the quarterback. And then we want to find who that guy is and make sure that he can't do both of those things. And so we got a pre-snap situation where we're looking for numbers, and then, of course, the post-snap situation is that we're trying to read ourselves always in a good play. The thing, another thing that we like about the option offense that we think is an advantage is that it's, it, 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 uh, it slows down attacking defenses, you know, with everybody now trying to get a pass rush. Because, you know, everybody's throwing the football nowadays. Uh, it slows it down a little bit because now they can't attack up field hardly as well if you're running that uh, option inside of them. And I'll show you that here in the next part. Also, it, uh, it simplifies defense because people cannot line up and, and, uh, and give you a whole lot of different looks defense because they've only got like three days to get ready to stop an option offense and there's not many people running the option anymore. And so they've got a real a, a disadvantage because they've only got three or four practice days uh, to get ready to stop the option. So if they've got somebody assigned to the quarterback, somebody assigned to the pitch, somebody assigned to the die, they can't be real multiple with that. And so that's been an advantage. Another advantage is, of course, you know, the running game, uh, I still think makes you a better defensive football team. I think if you can run the ball, you can do a lot of other things. If you can't run the ball, I think you got some problems, especially on shrinkage of the field. As you get closer to the end zone, the field shrinks. And when you're, if you don't have a running game, then that really... Uh, takes away some weapons for you, and it's the name of the game is still getting the end zone, and so uh, I think that's an advantage. Uh, one other advantage I think is really good is, and and in the option game it can go either way. A lot of people run the option out of the wishbone or three backs. We run it out of the one back and we run it out of the split backs, and and the reason we like to split backs is because we're going north and south when the ball is snapped. We don't have to run angles. We're going north and south, and we really like that. We got some video here, I think, that we're going to show uh, in the latter part of this. And uh, if, we'll, if we'll roll that video, and uh, I want to show you where we're trying to get to. We're going to show you about five or six plays on the video uh, of the triple option, the way we run it. And you'll see some of it uh, in a split back. You'll see some of it in a one back. This is a split back. And as you can see, the quarterback is up in a line of scrimmage. All right, he's keeping it here. He read, he read to keep, and so he's keeping it. And this is one phase of the, of the option. We want the quarterback. Uh, his thought process is, is he's always thinking pitch, and he's going to read the dive just like you would uh, uh, as a, as a person doing typing or any other psychomotor skill. And then he's going to react to keep the football. If he's got the ball and there's not anybody there to tackle him, then he's going to run with the football. All right, let's keep this thing rolling here. Here's, uh, as you can see, he's up in the line of scrimmage, and there's a, there's a dive off of the triple option. He read the, uh, he's reading the man on or the first man outside to tackle, and he read the give, and, uh, and so there it is. Notice he's operating up in the line of scrimmage. Notice he's up in the line of scrimmage. See, that's where we want him operating, up in the line of scrimmage, not off the line of scrimmage. He misread that one. That was a misread. It was a, guy, it was a give read, but you see what he, what he does with it. Helps to have good athletes, too. Now, here's the one back. Here's the, here's the one back. He starts in motion. There's the dive read. It's a give, and of course he could come on and run the option to the guy in motion. We can we have the one back situation where the where the the slot back can be the pitch. He can even be the dive as he comes back in motion. Okay, real quickly now we're going to <clears throat> go over the the actual responsibilities and how we run the triple option the way we do it at Carson. And we probably do it just a little bit differently than a lot of other people do it uh, because it's a no mesh. 
a triple option, which, uh, you know, everybody talks about the mess. We did a little study a few years ago, and we found out that about 65% of the fumbles uh, in, a, in a triple option offense, of course, you know, that's the thing you try to stay away from. You don't want the turnovers. And the thing that we found out in the triple option offense was that the thing that most people fumbled on was the mesh or the handoff between the quarterback and the dive back. And so we came up with this idea of a no mesh. And I'll show you, I, I'll get to that. First thing I want to do, though, is show you the blocking responsibilities. And we'll go over these real good. We got these five men right here uh, ready to help us. The center's responsibility is block zero through the play side gap. So he's going to block through the play side gap. And he's going to make sure that he gets off, you know, a scoop block up to the backside linebacker if there's not, if there is one. But he's going to block the play side gap, and we call it zero through the play side gap. Guard's going to block number one. Ever who number one is right there? That would be number one. Zero one. That'd be number one. The tackle blocks first man inside. His responsibility is to come down on the first man inside. It doesn't matter now if it, if he had a man on his inside shoulder, that'd be first man inside. Okay, otherwise, if he's head up or if he's shading and you're trying to work yourself inside and you're going to do that with an explosion technique of trying to rip your inside arm so that you can get off of him, it's a quick move for you to get off and get on the inside. The tight end is releasing, or, you know, it can even be a slot receiver. It can be a, a, a receiver out here. You stay out there. It could be a receiver out here. But if he's a tight receiver, he's going one, two, three, slow release, and he's reading in the secondary, see who's coming after the pitch, and he's attacking the outside of every who's coming after the pitch. And so he's trying to take away the outside, and it's a rip trying to get through his outside hip. And so you're taking a slow release. So if the pitch back can catch up with you, we don't want you throwing the block and him, him be way back there. So if you release quick, you might throw the block and a good defensive back would get off of you and still make the play. So we want you slow release. One, two, and then on the third, you're reading and you're looking him right in the eyes and you're seeing now if he happened to have half field coverage or if he happened to have deep third coverage and he lost you, in other words, he takes off, now who are you going to pick up? You're blocking every who comes after the pitch, so it would be him. So here would be the roll, and you'd be coming out here, and it'd end up with a double team because the wide receiver is attacking, and you're doing what's called a push block. And all you're trying to do is just run until you can step on his toes. And then when he'll let you step on his toes, we want you using your hands, and we want you to push him wherever he wants to go, but don't lose contact with him. Okay? That's the blocking the responsibilities. Now, men, one thing that's interesting about us, you know, if you're going to run the, if you're going to run the option, uh, we're going to spread them out a little bit. Get in your stance there, center. Uh, we're going to be at least three feet. We might even be three and a half. We're going to be four to six feet with you. Okay, and then we'll flex you anywhere we want to. We'll even put you out in the slot corner of the formation and do some things. Now, that's interesting right there, isn't it? But that, what that does, it separates the running lane a whole lot more. widens the running lane a whole lot more for this guy to have to squeeze it. And so, and then if he jumps in the gap on us, then we're going to make a call here and we're going to make sure he doesn't get penetration on us and we still have got something going for us. And then the read, if he jumped in the gap, now who's the read if we're reading a man on or first man outside to tackle? Who's the read now? It'd be this man. And so it just makes him, and he's got a long way to go to get to the dive. All right, line back up in the five technique. Now here's, that's the blocking responsibilities. Now here's the quarterback's <coughs> thought processes. Quarterback takes the ball, and the first thing he's thinking is thinking pitch. That's the only thing he's saying. We don't want him having multiple thought processes. We want him to have one thought process, and that is he's going to think pitch. So when he takes a snap, all he's thinking is pitch. So if he gets trouble any time, if, there's, if he gets penetration, if something happens that he, that he doesn't want to have happen, he's thinking pitch, and he can always pick himself, pitch himself out of trouble. Now, He's also reading the dive. And so here's his process. He takes the ball. He takes the ball. And we're going to read, run this dummy right here. He takes the ball, and he's stepping up in the line of scrimmage, and he's aiming it right down the barrel. So he's taking a snap. Men, block, walk through your blocking responsibility. Uh, and he's aiming it right down the barrel. He's running right here, and he's reading the guy's eyes right there. He's pointing right at his eyes, and he's reading it. Now, if his eyes come hard toward the ball, then he's just pulling it right there, and then here he come on. He's thinking pitch. He's thinking pitch any time, and he can pitch it. All right, now, if his eyes do not come hard toward the ball, and I'm aiming it. All right, get back, man, real quick. All right, step back through your blocking assignment. All right, here I come. I'm up in the line. I'm aiming it right at his eyes. If his eyes do anything except come hard toward the ball, I just keep it there, and there it goes. All right, 
Any questions? Now, of course, he's a he's a back. He's got the football. If he comes down through here, I step through it, man, quickly. He comes down through here. Here comes the dive. All right, here he pulls. Now here comes somebody making pitch. He's thinking pitch. All right, it's a pitch this way. It's thumb under. It's a thumb under pitch. So he's carrying <laughs> he's carrying the ball at his numbers. He's carrying the ball at his numbers, and it's a it's a pitch right there with a the thumb under. I've lost it twice, man. I'm better I'm better than that. All right, now. If there's not anybody there to make him pitch it, if there's not anybody to make him pitch it, he's got the ball in his hand, there's a goal line, and then he runs the goal line. But here's a little coaching point. He'll flick it. He'll flick it, and there he goes, right there. Now, all the way down the field, you'll be talking to him. Ball, 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 meaning you're with me all the way. And if I get down here and here's a strong safety, now I'll pitch it. I'll pitch it any time. But you got to let me know you're with me because somebody might have picked you off. All right, hurry back. Any questions about the quarterback? That's the, <laughs> you understand what you're doing. All right, that's quarterback responsibility. Dive back. The dive back rips it out of his stance. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. The triple option is a 100-yard dash out of the stance. It's going north and south, and it's a 100-yard dash. Now, your alignment, your heels would be four yards from the point of the ball. Put the point of the ball down in your stance up there. All right, you see how close that is? For you back just a little bit. All right, four yards right there from the, your heels at four yards from the point of the ball. Now your aiming point is at the hip of the guard, but that's only your aiming point. You take that one step and that block through you, walk through your blocking assignment. Now you find the tackle's tail. Right there is the tackle's tail and you brush the tackle's tail. That's where you want to be right there when you carry the football. Why do we want you on the tackle's tail? Get you farther away from the reed. Get you farther away from the guy we're not blocking. You don't want to run where he is because he'll hurt you. You want to run where he's not. All right, so that's, that's the way we're doing it. Now, if this guy happened to be inside or if he slants on the snap, if he slants on the snap and you're releasing inside, what are you going to do? You're going to run into him. Now, where's his tail? Right there's his tail. You brush his tail. All right, and that's the way... That's the way we always know we're running the right place if we brush the tackle's tail as we take the football. All right, that's the dive back. Now, if you don't get the ball, your first step is right there, and then you find the tackle's tail, you brush the tail. See, these guys are building a wall for you. They're building, these three guys right here are building a three-man wall. You see that wall? And you want to squeeze the wall, and you squeeze the wall by brushing, brushing his tail. All right, now, hurry back. Thank you, man. Now, if you don't get the ball, in other words, your read squeezes, squeezes the ball. All right, you, you run your read at it. Point it right at his eyes. All right, he squeezes. Now, you're going to work yourself up the field as best you can, and you may not be able to, but you want to fold over your arm and try to work yourself to the second level. Try to get to the linebacker level if you can and block. If you can, it'll be a heck of a collision right there, and you've got to take care of yourself. All right, pitch back. The pitch back is run a 100-yard dash. And man, I'm telling you, that's a 100-yard dash. Now, let me tell you about your alignment also. You're foot-to-foot -foot with a guard if he's a three-foot split. If he's more than three feet, then you adjust your split accordingly. In other words, you stay as if he's three-foot three split, which would be about right here. Then you line up foot-to-foot -foot with him. If he gets more than that, get a little wider now. You stay right there. Okay, that's because we want you all the same all the time. Now, pitch back. You make sure you always line up foot to foot with him. We don't want any staggered stances or anything. And you're sprinting as hard as you can, a hundred yard dash to that sideline, and you're expecting to pitch any time because what's he thinking? He's thinking pitch. And he can pitch it to you any time. If he gets trouble, he's pitching. So you got to think pitch any time. Now, as you sprint, here's what we're working for. Come on down the line, walk through your blocking responsibilities. Come on down the line, squeeze the quarterback. All right, we're working toward this kind of a pitch relationship. Five yards outside and one yard deep. If we can get that, then we've got a good pitch relationship because now he's pitching to you and you're running downhill and you're not running forever before you gain a yard. Okay? All right, any questions about that? All right? Now, your thought processes is what? Dive pitch. Okay, your thought Dive processes. Pitch. Okay, your thought processes is Dive. pitch. Okay, that's, that your thought processes is pitch. That's all you're thinking. You're going to take it right here and just like, have you ever had typing? All right, when you have typing, what are you doing? You're looking at that book right there and you're just typing what you see, right? 
Now that's what this is. That's what the, that's what the dive fake is. When you the, the dive read is, as you go down the line right there, you're just typing right there. His eyes come hard. There it is. There it is. His eyes do anything else, you just leave it out there. And that's just like typing. It's the same kind of skill. They call it psychomotor skill. And it's exactly the same thing. And we're going to do that so much that you can just look at that book and just do that right there. And so you don't even have to think about it. Pretty good, isn't it? All right. All right, here we go. Now, let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. And let's see how it looks. Uh, give me a little more split here now. See, you guys aren't used to these big splits. Give me a little more split. All right. Here we go. Now walk through it. Now, why have I got the Agile dummy laying right here? That's exactly right, because I don't want him stepping off the line of scrimmage, because the first thing a quarterback wants to do, he wants to come off the line or he wants to go up in the line or come up, or down the line. We want him up in the line. We want him up in the line. We want him to aim it down the barrel. You, you hunt? You know how you aim a gun, look down the barrel? That's it. You're looking right down the barrel at that big, ugly guy right there. All right, here we go. Let's, let's run half speed. Let's run half speed, and I want to see if you can do it now. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. That's it. Good job. You're an option quarterback. Didn't know it, did you? Huh? You didn't know it. You thought she was one of them old drop back guys. All right. Good job. Okay. Let's, uh, now, let's add a little wrinkle to it. Here's something that nobody else in the country does that I know of, and it's called the counter triple option. Now, what you got to do, everything else is the same. It's exactly the same play, except now you two guys are going to look like you're running that way. So you're going to turn your head and shoulders to that sideline, both of you. And then you're going to rip out of that, and you're going to run the same thing, as I've been telling you. Your first step is toward him, and then you're going to find the tackle's tail, and you're going to run, run the, the brush in his tail and run the dive. You're going to turn your head and shoulders this way, and then you're sprinting to the pitch. Okay? Now, here's the hard part. Of course, you're a great option quarterback. I don't have to worry about it. You're going to step now. You're going to come here and flash the ball. You're going to kick, you're going to kick it 45 and flash the ball. You're going to bring this one to pivot on it, and you're going to snap your head and shoulders back around, and you're going to get right back up in his eyes again. And it's exactly the same play. So once you do this, it's the same play. But you've got to get your head around because your body will go where your head goes, and you've got to flash because we want linebackers running. We want everybody to move. You got flash, but then you got to bring it here when you make it pivot because you want the short center of rotation just like an ice skater so you go faster because you got to get around and you can't read it. That's hard steps. All right, let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. Here we go. Forty-five. All right. All right, pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, keep on. come on now. Don't pitch off the guy that's taking a dive. Come on around your little pile here and make somebody take you before you, before you pitch it. All right. Did everybody see that? It's exactly the same read. All right. He's kicking it off 45. Let me walk through it one time. All right. You guys take good steps. Now, are you foot to foot with the guard? You're going to be foot to foot with the guard. Here's the guard. You're going to be foot to foot. There you go. All right. You're two, a little bit too wide. Foot to foot with the guard if he had a three foot split. All right. Here we go. Here's the way it looks. Ready? Go. I'm going to snap. Bring it to my chest, fit my head around. That would be a pull because he came down on it. I'd step around it, come here, here he is, and I'm pitching it, thumb under. All right, that's the triple option. Any questions about any of that? Now I want to show you some things. Of course, you know, uh, the way defenses line up, you can't, you've got to always be the attacker. You cannot ever let the defense attack you. You've got to always attack them. And so a couple of things I want to show you. Uh, the way we get a numbers advantage or we get them making adjustments, of course, we run motion all the time out of different formations. But let me show you something out of the one back offense that we do with the triple option. Let's take a, a back and put him here uh, as a slot, uh, one yard outside, maybe one yard deep. And now let's run the triple option. Let's run what we've been running. And now I've got the tight end over there, the strong safety's over there. We got, so this is a one receiver side. It could even be a slot, you know, with a strong safety over with the trips. And now they got to make some adjustments with their linebackers. And we, there's several things that we can do here to make them adjust. And of course, that's part of the game plan. Find out what they do against certain formations and, and try to line up in the best way to attack them. But here's a couple of things that we do. Now let's run the triple option. This is what I've been showing you. Let's run it with a one back. 
And now the pitch man, in order to get in pitch position, you're going to go one, two, three, and then you're going to release outside, and you're going to get yourself in that one and five pitch position. But it's up to you to time it up because he may be a little slower. Okay, so you got to time it up. So you go one, two, three, get you some depth, and then get yourself in the position to where you're five yards outside and one yard deep of him so he can pitch it to you. All right, let's run it. All right, now you're a little bit deep. Remember four yards? He's, he's up above. There you go. All right, now let's run it. Now it's half speed. We're just, we're just walking through it. Here we go. All right, there comes a the dive. There's your pitch. All right. All right, that's, that's something you can do out of, out of the one back. Another thing you can do, all right, line up quickly, men. Another thing you can do, uh, and we've done this, and I know this is not a real good percentage, but we have sent him in motion and, and let him get back in a dive back position. All right, let's just say uh, you've been running the dive every time. You, you go over there this time. Now, you, come, you go in motion. You go in motion when he, when he starts you. How do you all start motion? On your heel, start him on the heel, and you come here, and then you snap it, and then I want you to go from here and run the dive. Okay? You're brushing his tail just like that right there. All right, let's run it again. All right, here's another way of doing it. All right, run the dive. All right. Now, that's, that's a little wacky, but that still gives you a chance to get some people moving to places where they don't want to move to, and we haven't done that many times, but i tell you one thing it does. It, it breaks the tendency, if you've got your dive back here and you, and you pitch back there, it breaks the tendency where they cannot gear on you every time, and they can't get a tendency on you as far as uh, every time you line up with the trips and a dive back, you're going to run the dive this way. We can do it back the other way. And there's, there's several little motion things that we can do with that. Uh, we can even motion him back over here and let him be the pitch man from here, like we saw in the video a while ago. We can... Uh, we can motion him back over to, to this side and even run the, the triple option back this side with him making a whirly bird move and getting back in pitch position. There's several things we can do with that. And it just depends on how complicated you want it to be. You don't want it to be too complicated. Again, with a triple option offense, you've got to spend time reading the option. It takes time. And if you start grabbing ba grab bagging with the option, then you're not going to have an option offense. You've got to really spend time on the option because the quarterback has got to do the reads over and over and over so it becomes automatic. I think the biggest thing that happens a lot of times with option, hopeful option offenses is that they give up on it too quick because they, they try to do the option plus 9,000 other things. In our offense, we have eight running plays. That's it. And we can attack every place that they give us voids with those eight running plays. And so I think that's the most important thing about option offense is you've got to sell out to it and, and you've got to repeat it enough so that, that you've got consistency with it. And so you can execute it. It's still the name of the game's execution. All right, get down, men. Let me show you one other thing we do right here. Uh, and of course, let's get in a, we got, uh, we get, we're getting a whole lot of shade. Let's, uh, we get a lot of three technique. Here, you know, let's, and the shade backside. You go ahead and middle linebacker. That's a that's the four three. We're seeing a whole lot of four three. Five. Won't you be the linebacker? There you go. Now, one of the things we had a lot of success with is option and linebacker. Option and linebacker. So now here's what we're doing. We're blocking number one man on the line of scrimmage. Number one LOS. So he's blocking out on number one LOS. And you know everybody's playing the wide threes now. He's playing out here wide. Most everybody's playing the wide threes. And they're trying to tack up through this shoulder here so that they can get penetration again. So that's great. Let's let them do that. So we're, we're blocking number one LOS. We're blocking number two LOS. Number two man on the line of scrimmage. All right now quarterback, we're getting way up in the line of scrimmage and we're taking this thing up in here to dive back. And we're going to option the linebacker. You're, you'll have a shade backside. You'll have a shade right here, and you're going to block him. And all right, what we're going to do now, we're going to take his thing up in the line of scrimmage here, and we're going to option the linebacker. All right, he comes to you. There you are. You got your keep right there. All right? He, he comes to you. You're going to run through his inside shoulder, and I'm going to run through his outside shoulder. All right, he comes to you right there. Now I'll run through his outside shoulder. All right, and that's your option of going wherever you want to go. All right, a lot of people, get back in the 50 defense like we had you there a while ago. A lot of people are trying to absorb the option from outside the dive, from outside in. That's the key to stopping the option. They've got to stop it from outside in. We say they never can stop it from inside out because we're going to block them. All right, 
Say this guy here is squeezing it hard every time. Walk through your step. All right, blocking the first minute. He's squeezing it hard every time, and they're trying to get this guy in a position by widening him or so he can scrape to the die, to the quarterback. Now, right, let's show you what we do with that real quickly. All right, now I go back and run that play. Block number one, LOS. Block number two, LOS. Now come ripping through here at the linebacker. Now let him run outside. Now if he steps outside any at all, we're going to give it to him. If he makes the outside move, we're going to give it to him. If he steps up inside like that right there, what are you going to do? You're going to keep it right there. All right, that's the option of the linebacker, which is a, another little wrinkle off the option game that we've had a lot of fun with and a lot of success with. All right, now, let me show you. Woo, got two minutes left. We've got to hurry. Let me get back into a split back, all right, wide receiver. Get, bring my tight end back over here, strong safety over here. There's about three or four little passes that we run play action pass. Now the key to this thing is the quarterback and the dive back. You guys have got to do a great acting job. Now I don't want you up in the line this time, but I don't want you off the line. I want you right down the line. All right? I want your shoulders down. I want it looks like you're running the option. I want you to point that thing. I want it to look like you're running the option with your shoulders down, your center grab you down, and I want you ripping, grabbing that arm and making it look like you're running a hundred yard dash. All right? Here's what we're doing. I want you in the pitch position, just like you have been. All right, now there are several little passes we can do off of that. He's, he's that down behind his shoulders. There's a dive. Here he comes, and on the move, he's carrying at his shoulders. Now, he can pitch it. If he's in trouble, he can pitch it. Otherwise, here's about four things we can do. With the inside receiver, you've been arc releasing. I want you arc releasing. All right, here he comes. He's got to go take the pitch. You've been blocking him all day. He's got to get the pitch. Now, you're right here. All right, we can throw it to him right here in this scene. All right, now quarterback, your key, if a free safety's in the pitcher, you don't throw it, you pitch it. All right, but if he's not in the pitcher, then you're throwing it to him right there on the dunk. All right, another thing you can do, you release outside, here he comes, and the corner will say he's playing a real deep third, and he's playing hard, or playing a half-field coverage, go out and have back half-field coverage. All right, now he's rotating up. All right, here you come. You release the outside. He's got deep third. Here he is, and you get right in this seam right here, okay? Right in there, and that's, that's what we call a bend, and that's, that's another little wrinkle. Another wrinkle is they're playing half-field coverage, or they're even playing a three, a, a three deep, and the, and the safety's trying to be the field man all the time. All right, you release, and you're getting right in the middle of the field, right in here. Now, as you come down the line, you just follow him, and it's also a good throwback. We go that way and turn around and throw him in this seam right here because the free safety's vacating the middle of the field. That's three great <laughs> throws that we can throw to the inside receiver. Even if you was a slot man out here, you throw the same patterns from out here. The bend, the dump, where you go and you stalk him and then get right up the seam, and that's a great play. All right, wide out, I about left you out. There's three or four things we can do with the wide out. He can do a slant. Off of that dive action, we can do the hitch, five-step hitch. We can do the fade, where he comes down the line, just throws it to you on the fade. It's sometimes in the seam on this coverage here, where he's got to come up, and he's back, and hit him right in this seam right here. And, uh, and that gives you some great options. If I had time, I could also show you a couple things that we do with the back out the back door and a throwback out of it. But we don't have time. we got to wrap it up. But that gives you a real quick look at some of the play action passes. Thank you. And we're ready to take your questions. And we've got the toll-free 800 line out there, and we're going to start right off in a place that we visited a couple of times yesterday, Gibbs High School in St. Petersburg, Florida. Bob Moulds is on the line with us. Bob, good morning. You're on with Coach Sparks. Bob, are you with us? Bob Moulds from Gibbs High School in St. Peter. I'll tell you what, we'll try to reestablish uh, contact with Bob here momentarily. Let me, get, let me get your thoughts, first of all, on the teaching element. Bill Bates and I talked a little bit about this, the, the importance of the teaching element uh, for coaches. You feel like, I guess, you never really get out of the teaching business, do you? Well, I think that's the key to it. Um, there's not any question about, uh, you know, the name of the game is teaching. I mean, they can't do it if you don't teach it to them. And, of course, uh, uh, I think a lot of times coaches take for granted that uh, I've seen some coaches, you know, they look like they're plugged into the 220, you know, like I did out there. I squeezed in 20 minutes and, of talking to two minutes. And, and I think sometimes we move a little bit faster than the kids can comprehend. And I think, you know, just like this, uh, 
uh, this clinic here, I, I think it illustrates all the teaching aids that are available nowadays that we probably aren't utilizing because we're still on the grease board, we're still on the blackboard, we're still doing things like they did it back in 1902. And, uh, and I think some of us need to be updated. And uh, that's an encouraging thing by seeing some of the stuff that you guys are doing here. Uh, the possibilities are unlimited. But I think you've got to be a great teacher. It's not what the coach knows, it's what those kids know can apply. And, uh, and I think that's the reason it's very important to keep it simple. And, uh, and be a good teacher. I uh, didn't have a chance out there too much, you know, because we we're going so fast, but it's great to have the kids feed back to you what they're hearing, and I think that's something that we don't do enough, of letting them tell you, what did I just hear you say? You know, and then you, you, can, you can get a handle sometimes on knowing where you are with them and, and that sort of thing. Of course, I, you know, I enjoy cutting up with them and having a good time with them because I think football's still a fun game. And, you got to have some fun. <laughs> have some fun. All right, let's try again for Bob Molds down in St. Petersburg, Florida. Bob, you with us? Bob Molds, are you with us down there from Gibbs High School in St. Petersburg? Okay, I'll tell you what. I know that they're, they're uh, patching through, and uh, and instead we're going to try again for uh, now. We're going to go to Freddie Hernandez. Freddie, good morning. You're on with Coach Sparks here from Carson Newman. You're on with us, Freddie. Yes, I am. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Coach, I just want to know what type of blocking scheme to use for your play-action passes. Well, we normally, Freddie, keep it uh, just like I was showing you that play with blocking the linebacker. I mean, uh, reading the linebacker. Uh, we have the guard blocking number one LOS, number one on the line scrimmage, tackle number two on the line scrimmage, and we let the dive back uh, take care of the linebacker. And, uh, and so that makes it pretty solid. And then we're reading in if the, if the, out, if the outside guy is not blocked, in other words, if they give us a two-man rush outside the tackle, then we've got a little bit of a problem. And, uh, and then we got to pitch it off of him. And uh, so we use the same blocking as we did with that uh, uh, as we, you know, run the dive back, as we run the dive play at the linebacker, same blocking. Now we're going to go way up to Washington State. Steve Frank joins us from Central Washington University in Ellensburg. Steve, are you with us? Yes, I am. Well, first of all, let me uh, also congratulate you, too. Uh, you are going to be the recipient of part of the Strength Footwear Training Shoe System. That includes uh, the videotape workout program and the shoe system itself, as you might have seen yesterday from Boots Garland. So uh, congratulations to that, and we'll get that to you. But go ahead with your coach, your question for Coach Sparks. Thank you very much. You bet. Uh, good morning. Good morning uh, you mentioned you had eight running plays, which attacks all areas. Could you name those eight? Well, we've got, of course, the triple option. You saw the triple option. We've got the misdirection play. Where the dive back will, you know, bend it back over center, reading the center's block. And, of course, we can trap it off of that. Uh, that's, that's the second one. The third one, we've got just a hard dive where the dive back runs at the uh, hip of the tackle, and he reads the tackle's block. He can run. It's the old Houston base play that they used to run. Uh, run it at the hip of the tackle and reads the tickle, tackle's block and runs it off of that. We run the two-way option, the speed option, where the quarterback takes the ball and separates from the line of scrimmage, sprints the inside shoulder of the outside linebacker and pitches off of him or keeps it off of him. We've got, the, uh, we've got uh, a, a misdirection, a uh, cross action with the backs. Uh, one back this way, counter, you know, the old cross-butt counter action. Uh, we've got the sweep out of the split backs. We just take the ball and we, sweep, uh, and, and we run the sweep uh, uh, out, of, out, of the, uh, out of the split backs, and then we have the isolation out of the split backs, and I believe that's eight plays. Next up is Marquette Millers. He joins us from Mount San Antonio College, and that's in Walnut, California. Good morning, Coach. How you doing, sir? Fine. Coach, uh, you do a pretty good job with that triple option. I can see why you have such a great program there. Thanks. I, I would like to ask you, you mentioned earlier that you had your quarterback come up and count the, uh, the defensive football team to determine which side of the option to. Now, I know some teams use an even front, which they stay balanced on both sides of the defense. Um, what is your strategy then to do a counter off that? Well, if we're in a balanced defense, we're going to run to our strength, in other words, our two receiver side. And we'll try to make them line up where we want them to line up with our formations. But uh, say we got a tight end flanker, and they're, they're five and a half to this side, and five and a half to this side, we're going to run to the tight end and flanker side and, uh, and, and continue with the numbers advantage. Next up, Monty Lewis from Southwest College in Winfield, Kansas. Monty, are you with us this morning? I sure am. Good morning and uh, congratulations. You receive a pair of Nike Field General coaching shoes from Nike and East Bay. Congratulations. There you go. <laughs> All right, Monty, go ahead with your question. 
Coach, you uh, made reference earlier about the no mesh, and I was wondering about your uh, how you teach your quarterback his footwork. Are you going to heel turn? Are you going to pick up an attack? Are you just going to slide? Or how does it best fit your athlete? Just tell him to get there. I was just my question was on your uh, teaching the footwork to your quarterback with the no no mesh uh, thought in mind. Well, Coach, so it's kind of funny. You know, used to uh, when we first started running the option out of the split backs, I can remember uh, going in here in the Houston staff, and they said, you know, you take an 18 uh, inch step followed by a six inch step and, and all that sort of thing. And, and then, you know, you reach back and you reach for the mesh. And so the only thing we have tried to do is just take the ball and run at the eyes, you know, by pointing out at the barrel, pointing the, 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 down the barrel at, the, at a reed and, and just run behind the, the point and we really don't teach a mesh. And, and, uh, and so all we say, here, here it is, and you know, and this is good Tennessee coaching here. You take the ball quarterback and you run into the dive back. And, uh, and of course, you know, you pull or you leave it out there according to what your read tells you. And so that makes it really simple. Now, sometimes we'll get a partial mesh because the quarterback's in the process of pulling it back and he may be brushing a little bit on the hip of the, of the dive back, but, but we do not teach a mesh. And so all we tell the quarterback you take the ball and you run, you lead step, and of course he's got to hump it because remember the dive back's at four yards. And if he's running a hundred yard dash like we want him to do, you know, then we're saying that the guy that's, that's responsible for the dive hadn't got time to sit there and guess whether he's got the dive, whether he's got the, the ball or not. He's got to make a decision hard to come and get the dive. And when he does that, of course, and that gives us a definite read that we want to read, rather to keep it there or to pull it. And so. It's a simple thing we say, point it at your read and run behind your point and, and let him tell you what to do with it. From California, let's go all the way back across the country and uh, Kansas, back across the country to Delaware as we go to Mike Norton from Indian River High School in Frankfort, Delaware. Mike, good morning. You're on with Coach Sparks. Thank you very much. I have one question. Uh, if you have a stack over the place I tackle, what do you tell your quarterback in reading the stack? Well, we're probably going to block the tight end down, and we're going to run the speed option or run something outside if they're stacking. But we have read the stack. In fact, is it's pretty doggone good football play. Uh, and it takes a lot of work, and you've got to start it probably in preseason practice, or you're not going to get it done if you wait until the week of the practice. But we've had the quarterback to take the ball, run at the inside eyes of your read, and read the stack. In other words, if one of those two guys is coming hard on the dive, then you're going to be pulling. If they're not, then you keep it out there and you're ripping inside the stack. And so uh, there's two thoughts about it. You know, uh, you can run the, the option inside the stack and read it, read the stack, or you can go ahead and, and, uh, and maybe check out of it and, and go to a play that might be a little bit more conducive. If they're stacking inside, then you probably got something off tackle or outside that might be better for you. Let's take it down to my uh, broadcast partner, Dave Garrett's old stomping grounds to uh, Union High School, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and that's Dale Blankenship. Bill, good morning. You're on with Coach Sparks. Good morning, Coach. It's uh, obvious that uh, you guys will do a good job attacking any defense. I'm just curious what types of defenses give you the most problems. Well, of course, you know, Coach Blankenship, I, I, the universal defense now is, a, is you know, is a 4-3. And, uh, and so uh, I think that thing to the tight end side a lot of times or to the two receiver side, uh, can really give you a fit. And sometimes back to the weak side, I think you got numbers on them. And so, of course, again, it depends on secondary coverage. If they're giving you half field coverage, you may have a little bit of problem back to the weak side. So here's what we've tried to do with that a whole lot. We've tried to line up and double tight end some against the slide defense, the 4-3 slide. And it makes them balance up. It makes them do some things that they don't want to do. And, uh, and of course, again, multiple defenses, uh, I mean, multiple formations causes them to line up where you want them to line up, and that's still the key. Uh, and so I can't think of any, and that's a great thing I said about the game plan. You know, there's not any uh, defense that they can line up in that you can't attack because you're reading yourself into a good play. And so consequently, that's the part that uh, is, is the beauty of the triple, op the, the triple option is because you can always read yourself into a good play. And so uh, some defenses cause you to make some adjustments. You may have to make some blocking adjustments. You know, the. The tight end down on the linebacker sometimes is something that we've had a lot of success with, and, uh, and, and two or three other things. But that's, that's a good question. Thank you.
We have time for one more question. We'll go to East Buchanan High School in Gower, Missouri. Bob Brandt, good morning. You're on with Coach Ken Sparks. Good morning. I wanted to ask a little bit about the defenses that were bothering you, but after the last question, I want to go in a little bit more in detail as far as uh, linebacker uh, stunts and, and that sort of thing. How do you coach those as far as the mesh points and reads? Well, of course, again, Bob, we don't have a mesh point. Uh, you know, the main thing, uh, the triple option does, it takes people out of a lot of the stunts that they normally would do. Uh, and you know, the, when, you, when you're building a wall with your tackle blocking first man inside, uh, and of course sometimes if your guard is sitting there and there's a guy in his gap and there's a guy in a the tackle's gap, then of course you know the old reverse shoulder block that we used to teach back there in 1902, you know, and that's the thing that you gotta do. And, uh, and you do have to stop penetration if the quarterback is trying to get up in the line of scrimmage. And that is something that you constantly got to work on. You know, most people with their offensive line start off with, uh, with a base block. You know what, we start off with the reverse shoulder block because we think that that's probably the thing that's going to give us the most problem uh, the quickest. And so uh, we've got to stop penetration with our big splits. And so the first thing we work on is, is the reverse shoulder block. And, and of course, like I say, we, we got some calls where the guard and the tackle can block the gap and the center can block play side, and there's some things that we can do to help. But basically, uh, again, you know, we're going to take them out of a lot of the stunt, a lot of their stunts because we're running the veer and it's going to her yards, you know, that way. And, you know, they'll pass it up sometimes if they're not careful. And so uh, uh, that's why we're saying one thing I want to mention that I didn't mention out here, and Bob, I, I guess it would relate to your question. A lot of time when you got a scraping linebacker, and say you got a three technique, a wide three technique, and so your tackle's blocking first man inside, it would be that man, and he can't work himself to the second level to get to the linebacker. Then a lot of times we tell our dive back to always be looking for that scraping linebacker and be conscious of dipping inside of him. Squeeze the double team on the three technique and then dip inside that scraping linebacker, and it's been amazing that we've, we've really had a lot of success with that. But again, we're talking about repetition and a lot of work on it. Ken, we thank you for the time and uh, best of luck to the Eagles this fall. Thank you, appreciate it so much. Sportscom brings you the Coaching Connection tape series, this year's gathering of football's best minds in one complete package. Order your complete set with coaching on topics that include offensive, defensive, and special teams, as well as how to build your program's strength and conditioning workouts. You will see first-hand demonstrations of football's techniques and skills from Tom Osborne of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Butch Davis of the world champion Dallas Cowboys, and many others like Terry Bowden, Al Miller, R.C. Slocum, Greg Landry, Fisher DeBerry, Ken Sparks, Dick Tomey, Matt Simon, Joe Avizano, Les Steckel, Ron Dickerson, as well as expert commentary on many important topics related to the sport of football. In addition to videotapes, each complete set comes with a comprehensive Coaching Connection playbook that contains outlines on each coach's demonstration. This handy guide takes you through the fundamental issues associated with offense and defense football strategies. A profile of each teacher will further enhance your appreciation of each coach's background on winning football. Individual videotapes can be purchased, or there are several other package options available. To order your complete set with a playbook of the Coaching Connection, call 1-800-260-7767 and use your Visa or MasterCard. To pay by check or money order, write to Sportscom, 1551 Corporate Drive, Suite 125, Irving, Texas, 75038. Texas residents at 8.25% sales tax. And call now. Operators are standing by. Sportscom, the future of sports education.